everyone, I'm Prophetess Jane. I'm an elder at City Family Church in Coventry. And today I want to say to you that Jesus graciously welcomes you. Jesus says to you, welcome. He is light and there is no darkness in him. Jesus is the light of the world. And when you are his, then you too are the light of the world. You have to believe the truth. You have to believe that God is good. He is always good. Lots of people have got the wrong idea about God. They just believe all kinds of lies about God. Remember, Jesus is God, Yahweh, Jesus. They believe lies about him. They don't know the truth about him. And there's a lot of people who are really bitter and angry and hateful towards Jesus. And they blame him for all of the hurts that they've experienced, the pain, the loss, the suffering in their lives. They rant at him. If there is a God, why is there all this suffering? They also blame him for all of the suffering in the whole world. Well, if you're like that, do you want an answer? Do these people who rant at God want an answer? That's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Do you actually want to hear the answer? God's love for people and God's love for you is absolutely staggering. His love for you is mind-blowing. We don't understand completely about suffering, but we do know that Jesus wants to come alongside you in your suffering if you will let him. Much suffering comes through people. I'm sure we all know that people can be very selfish, greedy, manipulative and sinful to others. Also, the devil is real. He's on a mission to steal, kill and destroy and will exploit all pain and loss and suffering. He will exploit it to the hilt. Also, God allows suffering. Have you ever cried out to God in your pain and suffering? Well, someone in the Bible did, a man called Habakkuk. In the Bible, Habakkuk complained to God that he said, God, you don't listen. You don't see what's going on, God. You don't care. And you allow evil, you allow it. And you let your own word be treated with contempt. Habakkuk cried out to God with this complaint. And you know what? God answered him. If only people would sincerely turn to God, they might find that they get their answers. We know in Isaiah 55, verse 8, we read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. God's thoughts are different to ours. God's ways are different to ours. I can't explain to you in this short exhortation God's answer to Habakkuk. It's too big for this time. It's worth the whole sermon. But God answered all of Habakkuk's complaint. And you know what? It wasn't the answer that Habakkuk expected. I advise you to read the book of Habakkuk in the Bible yourself and you will see exactly what God said. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. You know, 
Lots of people misquote the Bible. They think that they're quoting what God says. But a lot of people get it wrong, especially unbelievers. They, they misquote the Bible and they say, this is what the Bible says. But if people don't know their Bible well, or really at all, and it's all second hand, third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand, they get it wrong. Um, an example of this is the verse that says, money is the root of all evil. Well, the Bible doesn't say that, actually. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's completely different. We need money. We all know that the grip of money, we all know that money has a grip on a lot of people, a real firm grip. Most people want more and more and more money. And some people will do anything to get it. Anything, including murder. This is why the Bible says it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. God has revealed himself to us through his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So what's the Father like? Look at Jesus. When I say look at Jesus, I don't mean look at these paintings of him from the Middle Ages, paintings that make him look very weak, very frail, very effeminate. Jesus was a carpenter. He had muscles. Jesus was a strong, completely strong, the smartest man who's ever lived, the Son of God. Jesus, when, you, when I say look at Jesus, don't look at those paintings that are telling a lie about him. Look at him in the Bible. That's where you find him. We see in the Gospel accounts that Jesus didn't explain everything that he did to people and he didn't explain everything that he said. Some people took great offence at this and they still do. And if you're his follower, people will take offence at you as well if you don't explain everything to them and everything that you say. People take offence. You can't help that. It's about their growth in Jesus to stop taking offence. You can't help it if people take offence with the truth. If you've got roots of bitterness in you, and hatred in your heart towards Jesus. How does he feel about you? He welcomes you. He says, come to me, come to me. He doesn't wait until you are perfect to welcome you. He welcomes you now, just as you are. You'll never be perfect. Come to him now, just as you are. Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, come now, come now and let us reason together. Let's talk this through. Come and reason with me. God is saying, he's thrown out the invitation to you. Jesus is inviting you to talk it over with him, to pour it out, to scream and shout to him if you need to. He can take it. He cares about you and wants to let you know that you have to let him in and he can prove himself to you. You may find that you have a lot of fixed ideas that can actually be addressed by Jesus. If you're in a struggle, he wants to end that struggle for you, that struggle of unbelief. Will you allow him to do that? If you're waiting for a prayer to be answered that hasn't been answered yet, it might be because he wants your faith in him to develop and grow. Faith pleases God. Jesus wasn't shocked or surprised by people, by what people did, by what people said, 
because he knew what was in people. And he still knows what's in people and he knows what's in you. The confusion, the pain, the not knowing, the loss, the misunderstandings, the injustice, the sin. It's all aimed at God. The thing is, you matter to God. Jesus welcomes you to come to him and lay your burdens down and find peace. He will give you rest. It's your choice. But the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Don't be a fool. What does Jesus want? Jesus wants you to turn to him in confidence or in uncertainty. Just turn to him exactly as you are and allow him to speak to you. He says in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. We don't know everything about God, but we do know a lot through the Bible. We don't understand everything about suffering, but we do know that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, and that he is the only way to God. Let him love you. He has his hands wide open for you, wide open. He's waiting for you to come to him. He died on the cross for you because of his love for you. Will he not now freely give you all things? He's died on the cross for you. Won't he now freely give you all things? He's standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking at the door of your heart. Open the door of your heart and let him in. Amen. Don't forget to check out our website www.cityfamilychurch.com I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.